I'm John Cogley. I'm the owner of Daniel Smith. And today we're in the artist, in the artist studio with Ian Stewart. Ian's from Alabama, USA, um, artist and also Daniel Smith brand ambassador. Ian, welcome. Thank you. Nice to be there, John. Um, would you be so kind as to take the time to show us your studio and maybe um, works that you've done in the in the past and explain to us your technique? Sure. Let me uh, just flip this around here. So you get my my studio. This is a what you call a it's a Alabama four square that's been added onto. It's basically a dog trot with a central hallway, but then this addition was done in the 40s, I think. But this is what sold me on the, uh, on the house, and so we bought it and renovated it uh, in 2004. So this is my, my studio, my drawing area, and you'll see I am setting up for video stuff. And then I gotta watch my fingers here. So this is an old antique drawing table. I just like the, uh, the fact that if I'm painting outside versus painting inside, I don't have to change. Um, you know, I'm always standing to do my work. And then I use these Milwaukee tool drawers as actual uh, you know, storage containers. And that's my space, man. It's a lot cleaner than it usually is. And then you see outside, I've got a, a little place I can sit and draw. Uh, here are a few little pieces that I just pulled out. They're sort of sitting around the, without frames. I tend not to keep my own work in the, uh, in the studio. I like to keep my friends or, or put my friend's work hanging. So I don't know, something about my works in my studio distracts me, but others doesn't. So there's just a few here. Those are beautiful. Thank you. Um, and then my, let me just flip this over and put these away, hold on. So I've got this nice big area for, that'll hold a full size sheet. As you see, this one is a, yeah, that's a full sheet. And then my, my sketchbooks, um, and I'll just flip through a little bit. Um, this is really where I have the most fun. Do you sketch a painting before you actually put it to a bigger sheet of paper? I do. Yeah, those are sort of good examples of just testing things out before I do a larger piece. There's a better example of those kind of sketches. And then they, they actually boil down into just sort of these really very simple shaped um, value studies. But if I'm using figures or cars or anything like that, I'll always put them in. And then I'm always doing those kind of studies as well. And then over here we have my, I'm a palette fiend, man. And then of course the uh, ubiquitous computer area. So that's about, that's about that on the, on the workspace. But I'd be happy to show you, I've got, you know, you'll see a lot of your products in here. Wow. So just being able to get things, get the stuff quickly. Um, same thing over here, painting storage. And then paper. It has to be, with this small of a studio, it has to be pretty organized. Uh, and so I have other areas in the, um, in the house where normally you would have raincoats or store things like that that's full of frames and matting and stuff. You know, it's, uh, you have to get creative with that. 
Well, it's a beautiful space. So, Thank you. Ian, when do you uh, do you test your colors before you actually start painting? Uh, for example, I how do you interact with each other. You do. As I mentioned, I'm writing this book. Oh, so this is a little sneak preview of something I'm doing for the book to show how these these colors will actually work together. And I think you'll. Soda Light has been one of my real favorite ones. That's the way that mixes good. to make greens yeah. is, you know, with a with a raw sienna or something like that, um, or the Aussie, uh, what is it, red gold? Aussie gold, yeah. Aussie gold. Um, those two just work fantastic. Do lots of this kind of stuff where I just take color and see what it's going to do. That's what it does when it does. But just a little test like that. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah, just playing around. I'm actually not set up to, you know, being very honest here, you know, I wasn't supplied the questions or anything. So this is on the fly and this is real time. And this is the way it should be, I think. I think people love that. It's from the heart and they can actually see yep. kind of your process. Yeah. So what kind of brushes do you use, Ian? Do you use uh, a combination of synthetic and natural, or do you prefer one over the other? I'm, well, the people that have taken workshops from me know that there was a, a television program on where they were talking about um, natural hair and and how it was sourced, and my wife and I had a, a long chat about that. So long story short, I use um, synthetic. But I found that it's, I'm really, really tough on my, my stuff. So uh, a, a synthetic price-wise, you know, if I break it, meaning breaking the tip was typically what I'll do, um, I can just grab another one. So this isn't my plein air setup, but I've always got yeah. New. These are a Skoda Perlas here. Okay. So if I break the tip off of this one, and this one's just about to go. So that little tip will just, you know, kink like that. So then I just grab another brush. I always travel with a few, and I always have a few on hand. Um, I do like their the Ultimo Mop, which is that. But, you know, never say never. Um, if I've got, you know, if I've purchased a brush already, I think that's actually in my plein air kit. Um, I don't have any, there's a, there's a squirrel. But, so yeah. Um, I, I like the way they work. They're they're not as expensive. They're um, sort of this running joke I have with myself is is uh, the fear of winning, you know, a Kalinsky or a Windsor New Newton uh, Series Seven. Like I put I'm putting it on the shelf, man. I don't know what to do with it. I'd, I'd be scared. I'd just ruin it, you know. So Ian, when you choose paint, are you a fan of uh, transparent or do you like granulating or combinations? Depends on the, uh, the use. So if, you know, if I'm going for some textural effects, certainly a granulating color and your Primatex are a great example of that. I mean, if you take French ultramarine and put it with, so, uh, what is it, um, Sedona, you're going to get something really textural um, with a lot of you know sediment and things like that, um, and that's very useful in situations or certain situations. And then, you know, if I want something very you know clean passages, then I'll go transparent. I just I tend not to go with staining colors because I like to lift quite a bit. So. so a little while ago, um, we talked about the outside. Can you show the people what you see from your outside balcony? It's actually quite beautiful. 
Yeah. Um, so, and this is, I mean, we, we were sitting next door having at a friend's house and saw people starting to work on this house in 2004. And I just walked over and, and asked the guys, um, let me just walk you out and ask the guys, you know, who owns the house and how much is it? And I, I think we owned it two weeks later. Wow. So this is, this is Southern. I mean, you got a huge pecan or a couple of pecans in the back. And then, it, you know, we planted the Japanese maples. When we bought this property, it was six feet. I'm not kidding. Six feet high in kudzu. So we didn't know what it was. Um, and then we just had a guy come in and grade it and landscape it. And, uh, and we've, you know, we, we, we sit out here every night until the pressure cooker comes on in the South. And then it's, we sit inside every night. <laughs> but, if you follow Ian on Facebook. You'll know that Ian also has a farm, uh, which is quite, yes. quite nice. Very nice. It's, and that's the other, so there's, there's a lot of keep up with an old house. And now we have two old houses uh, and, a, and a, a bit of land, which is, it's a blessing, uh, you would say. But I think my, my father-in-law, who we inherited from, he's probably laughing at me, you know, attempting to run the tractor and do all this stuff that I just should have learned from him. But, uh, you know, I was too busy riding around on four wheelers and enjoying myself. <laughs> but it's it's nice to get away there uh, and it's actually right now it's really good uh, because we can just pack a cooler uh, and go from door to door without you know having to make any stops so there's no no worry about travel there so it's, it's two hours north of us just about northwest very nice so well, I want to thank you, Ian, so much for sharing time today with us, for showing us your gallery, um, yeah. for showing us your paintings and your style. And I hope to see you again in person. I think that the time, I'm sure, I, I pray that that's going to come to fruition sooner than later. As, as like you, I, I love to see artists and friends in person. Uh, yeah. This, I, I, it's, it's phenomenal that we have the internet, that we can at least talk real time. But nothing yeah. that in-person uh, connection. And thank you so much. Oh, my absolute pres uh, pleasure, John. Have a have a great day, man. Thank you, Ian. Bye bye. All right, cheers. Bye.